Welcome to Vape News Radio, the voice of vaping. In each show, we share the latest about regulations and things you need to know, plus upcoming conferences and fests, along with interviews with the movers and shakers in this fabulous vape space. Are you looking to get into this ever-expanding marketplace? Do you want to master this industry? Listen up as Norm Bauer, the vape mentor, shares it all. And here's your host, Norm Bauer. Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome to Vape News Radio, the voice of vaping. <laughs> Sorry about that. I got a little bit distracted because, you know what, we're videotaping this for the first time ever, so let me go ahead and get my video camera in the right place, and uh, I'll, I'll fix that for section number two. Let's have you do the, let's just have you say, hey, uh, welcome again here, and then we'll, do, we'll cut it all together for the podcast people. Hey, and welcome again. This is Vape News Radio, the voice of vaping. I am your host, Norm Bauer. Welcome, everyone. This is now the June edition. And, you know, I'm very excited because obviously there's always a lot of changes going on to the vaping industry. And as I mentioned to you last time, this is actually the one-year anniversary from when I first came into this business. And I had mentioned also the fact that I am redoing the website. I have a gentleman named Jesse Plautz who is going to be working on my website and, you know, we keep talking about when exactly we're going to relaunch. And so Jesse came up with the brilliant idea, said, you know what? The 4th of July is coming. It's Independence Day. It's when you were first introduced to vaping last year. So we're going to go ahead and launch the new VapeMentors.com website about that time. So you all stay tuned, and we're going to go ahead and update you on that. So, again, if you're new to the show, welcome. We are a subsidiary of Vape News Magazine, and it's really all about the business of vaping. We aren't going to be doing reviews of any mechanicals or mods or juices. We are going to be talking about the actual business of vaping, what's going on in the regulatory world, what's going on in the world of the conferences and the conventions and interesting things going on. So let me go ahead and dig in. I want to pick up something that we talked about last month, which was – the so-called fight against City Hall. And for those of you who may be caught last show, uh, we had a client out here who was being asked for some very special permits in order to open a kiosk, not even a brick-and-mortar store, but a kiosk. And so we went to City Hall to fight it simply because there was always that risk that they might say no. And if they said no to this particular type of permit, it all effectively put them out of business. So what ended up happening is that there was another shop in that same city. It was an actual brick-and-mortar store. So I went to the zoning committee to actually speak on behalf of that particular person, which, by the way, was not a client. But unfortunately, she did some things you know, a little bit short-sighted, and so she did not get the necessary paperwork for her to get going. So long story short, they had to vote whether or not they were going to give her what they call a conditional use permit. And it was unanimous that they all got it. So all things being equal, now the client with the kiosk is in the queue as well. And he's also going to have his conditional use permit, barring anything unforeseen within the next couple of weeks. So it's, a, it's again, it's an interesting scenario. When you're dealing with cities, especially if it's a smaller or medium-sized cities that does not have a vaping presence, or even if it does, you know, that's okay. You want to make sure that you got all your ducks in a row simply because of the fact that, there's too much room to risk. And so if you find yourself a location, obligate yourself to a, a brick-and-mortar store and a lease and then find out that the city's going to shut you down, that's just not going to work. So let me kind of catch you all up to date with what's happening in the convention conference market. And it's interesting because it seems like this is a very sick, uh, cyclical type of thing. You have one or two events that usually start in January and then there's maybe a little bit of gap. It seems like spring is the major season. So between March and this month of June, we had probably a half a dozen or more throughout different parts of the United States. And I want to share with you just kind of an update from literally one coast to the other. Uh, Matt Trammell, who is the editor of Vape News Magazine and the executive producer of Vape News Radio, he actually went to Miami. And this is the first time they had a vaping convention in Miami. And so the feedback that I got, it was a much larger group than they expected, well in excess of about 5,000 attendees and over 200 vendors. So, you know, guys, what we're talking about, we're talking about some seriously big shows here. We're talking about some shows that uh, are starting to draw a lot of attention, both people in the vape space and all those people who are just kind of curious. Now, at the same time that that was going on, meanwhile, 3,000 miles away, I mean, meanwhile, on another coast, I was out speaking at the L.A. Vape Affiliates Conference. 
And again, just to kind of bring you all up to date, this is this was a different animal. This was not a trade show. This was not a vaping convention in the typical sense. This was actually designed for people who either have or want to develop affiliate programs within their vaping industry, especially within their vaping sites. And so I went there to speak, and what I spoke on was the demographics of the industry and how it's changing. And uh, again, for those of you who you know, don't know much about me, um, I'm an industry expert, especially when it comes to the demographics of the vaping space, when it comes to the millennials also known as the Gen Ys, the Gen Xs, which are roughly between 32 and 50 right now, and then also the baby boomers that are me, uh, age 52 on up or so, actually about 51 on up till, till, till the mid to late 60s. So what ended up happening is I spoke at the vape convention and I learned from the vape convention. And here's what I learned is it's really all about web traffic. And so if you have a site that's getting some very significant web traffic, there's a lot of ways that you can monetize that. And, and when we say affiliate marketing, what we're talking about is finding organizations that have services, that have materials, that have products that you think would resonate with the audience that you bring in. And so this is a great way for you to develop income streams. And so a lot of the people that spoke were not in the vaping industry. They were actually in other industries. But the truth is, is it transfers over very, very equal, equally. So. Uh, that was interesting. So what we're going to be doing here is that we're going to be always looking for different affiliations of people or, and businesses and services that we think that our clients would like simply because of the fact that um, you know we want to provide services to you and obviously provide consulting and mentoring on our side. But when we come across you know great website work, like for instance, you know we at Vape Mentors just got our website logo designed by 99 designs it was you know three hundred dollars which was worth every penny i got it done in about a week uh big fans of audiobooks both audiobooks.com and audio on audible.com i don't get a chance to read as much as i would like so i end up having to listen to the books on tape which as far as i'm concerned is perfectly fine so right now, like I said, there's a little bit of a lull in the action, and there's really not much happening. There's one event or two events over the next 30 days or so, but it seems like most of the events are going to start kicking into gear towards the end of summer and then towards fall. So for those of you who live close to an event, or even if you don't live close to the event, I want to encourage you, get out whether it be a trade show, whether it be a conference, whether it be a convention, they're all going to be just a little bit different. Sometimes they're just an excuse to party and blow smoke rings and act, act crazy and stupid. And, you know, you can kind of take that for what it's worth. But, you know, that's not really why you want to go. You want to go there to learn. I want to bring you up to date with one of my favorite gurus, and that's Bonnie Herzog from Wells Fargo Financial. And again, I've mentioned Bonnie before, and for those of you who do not get her newsletter, please go ahead and let me know. It's a free newsletter. I get them probably about two to three times a week, and she does not just report on the vaping industry. She also reports on tobacco, convenience stores, alcohol sales, soft drinks, a lot of other products along those lines. But she has been at the forefront, and she's actually named this market on, on her behalf, and it's called the VTM which stands for the Vapor, Tanks, and Mods Market. And so what's happening here, and this I'm going to be taking directly from her report, which I find very interesting. It says more than 92% of convenience stores out there, more than 92% are moving towards offering some type of vaping product, whether it be liquids, primarily it's e-cigs, which they're getting from a lot of the big, big companies, and about 95% are carrying right now or expect to carry them in the next six months. So this is somewhat of a competition if you have a brick-and-mortar location, but all things being equal, they are not going to develop the following that you have the ability to develop in your brick-and-mortar location simply because of the fact they are a convenience item. They are not there to educate. They are not there to really do any instruction or give you give the, the, the customer any type of personal attention. Um, but they're a great lead-in. So you got to look at it as not a competition, but a great lead-in for someone who maybe is interested in vaping. Maybe they want to try some, uh, some e-cigs, and so this is a great way for them to kind of dip their toe in the water. Blue, B-L-U, and Enjoy 
are a little bit concerned about two of the new players on the market. I've talked about Views before. That's V-U-S-E, which is a brand new product created from the ground up by Reynolds Tobacco, now known as Reynolds Vapors, excuse me, RJ Vapors. And in Mark 10, um, both of these products are going to be rolling out nationwide over the next several months. And again, if you listen to, I think, show number three, which was about 30 days ago, I interviewed the gentleman from from RJ Vapors about views, and they started off in oh, in Utah and and Colorado. And then they opened up two new states this month, the month of June, I believe it was Wisconsin and Indiana or Illinois. And then starting next month in July, they're going to be rolling out nationwide. So if you are in the sound of this voice, by the time this is posted, you will probably be able to get the views electronic cigarettes. And again, they designed these from the ground up with the intention of creating something that would not be tiresome over, over a short period of time. Because what you've seen in the industry is that the stickiness rate of e-cigarettes is not that good. We find a lot of people who try e-cigs and then they actually go back to the analogs, and that's kind of unfortunate. And the number one reason that they do is because they just don't like the taste. They like the taste of a regular cigarette, and they also like the drag of a regular cigarette. So those are things that some of these new players are going to try to uh, tap into. So let's talk about profit margin. Um, obviously, one of the biggest reasons for the C space or the convenience store space to get into this is that these VTMs, the vapor tanks and mods market, is extraordinarily lucrative. Uh, it says here about 30%. So they have about a 30% margin, which is more than double the average cigarette margin. And right now, we are kind of in that sweet spot because we are not being taxed the way a cigarette is, we um, or a cigarette are. I'm not sure which is the correct English there. But as time goes on, we will be hearing uh, and we'll be seeing more taxation when it comes to the e-cigs and certainly the vaping market. Uh, see what else it says. Products are expected to comprise 45% of the vapor category in C stores in six months, up from about 26% today. So what that means is about one out of four stores right now is selling juice. And within the next couple of months, probably by the end of the year, it's going to be about every other one is going to be selling juice. So it just so happens that this is a space that I'm working in through my affiliation with Below Gourmet E-Juice, and we're rolling them out through uh, through several, several hundred 7-Elevens without, within the state of California. So you're going to be seeing Below Gourmet E-Juice, plus we're also going to have the ability to do private labeling. So if you are interested in having your own juice line, you just go ahead and let us know. Okay, uh, and to kind of put a button, uh, put a bow on this, the uh, VTMs are growing about twice as fast as the overall market. And here's where she leaves it. She says, bottom line, we continue to be encouraged by the burgeoning presence of VTMs in C-stores, that's convenience stores. We believe that they will drive momentum in the entire vapor category for retailers, which should help generate greater margins and gross profit dollars. So one thing you can be sure of is that this industry is going through a change. It will go through a change. Right now, we're a little bit in the lull with the deeming regulations kind of going through the, um, uh, through the petitioning process. We have about another three weeks or four weeks to go. And the consensus is that the FDA will probably go beyond that 75-day period to listen to the, uh, the different people's opinions. So let me go ahead and uh, mention a couple sponsors. You know, the show is sponsored by Blow. That's B-L-O Emporiums and Blow Gourmet E-Juice. If you're looking to open a turnkey store operation, if you're looking to develop your own line of juice, you go ahead and give us a call at 949-495-6162. And when we come back in just a few moments, we're going to have a couple of interviews. When I was out in Chicago and also at the National Association of Tobacco Outlets, I interviewed probably about a half a dozen or more, and I've been kind of stockpiling them. So you're going to hear an interview with a gentleman by the name of Richard Yu. You probably don't know his name, and you might not know his company. It's called First Union. They are the largest manufacturers of e-cigarettes in the world. One more time. They are the largest manufacturers of e-cigarettes in the world. How did they get there? What does it mean to you? Are you possibly a candidate for them to develop your own line of e-cigs? That's what we're going to talk about when we come back in Section 2. So we're going to have a little bit of the Below Gourmet E-Juice um, music as we roll on out of here into Section 1. And do not go away. We are going to be right back.
You're listening to the only show that takes a look at what's happening in the vape industry. It's Vape News Radio with your host, the vape mentor, Norm Bauer. 